Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Bleepin' Jeep, this is Tyler. This week I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on MIG welding. To do that, uh, I'm going to be using this JCR Off-Road DIY front bumper kit for the XJ Command or Cherokees. It'll also fit the Comanches. This is a really great uh, starter project for a couple of reasons. Number one being that the metal's really thick. And thick metal is a lot more forgiving when you're learning how to weld. And the second thing is, is you can grind and paint over this. So if your welds turn out crappy in the beginning, you're going to be able to, to grind them out and paint over them. As uh, Abe likes to say, the grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't. So I'm going to try and show you some of the things I do. Now, just as a disclaimer, I am not a professional welder. I took some night courses at a local community college 15 years ago because I wanted to know how to weld. I wanted to know the basics. Um, I'm a pretty decent, decent MIG welder, but MIG welding is really pretty easy. Uh, I'm not a very good stick welder. The guys who have a lot of talent are good at stick. Stick welding is a lot more difficult. The welder I'm going to be using to, for this project today is the Miller 211. This uh, machine works on both 220 and, and 110, so you can plug it into just your regular house power, or you can, uh, it's got a little adapter plug on there to plug it into 220 or 240, whatever the heck it is. Anyways, it'll weld both. I'm going to be doing it on uh, the 110 volt today, just the regular house power. Um, it should do fine. I'm going to be welding with uh, 0.030 wire. I normally weld with, with a little bit thinner stuff, the 023 on my old Millermatic 140 or something like that. Um, but I'm gonna try the thicker wire today. When, uh, when I did that other bumper kit, that thin wire made for a lot of welding. I mean, you gotta put a lot of metal in these corners. So this 030 wire should, should make that process go a little bit quicker. Stay tuned till the end of the video, guys, because we partnered up with Miller and they have agreed to give one of our viewers one of you guys, one of these Miller 211 machines. Now this, this is about, a, I think, a thirteen or $1,400 machine. So this is going to be a wicked awesome prize. At the end of the video, I'll explain to you how you can go about signing up to win that machine. All right, let's get started on this JCR Off-Road Bumper Kit. So one of the best welding tips that I can give you, this will, this will have more to do with how well your welds turn out than almost anything else, is prep work. MIG welding is very sensitive to dirty metal, meaning if your metal's dirty, corroded, got paint on it, rust on it, uh, chemicals, whatever, you're going to get a crappy weld. It'll contaminate the weld, the weld will be porous, you'll get bubbles in it, and it'll look like crap. Now JCR ships these kits bare clean metal. Uh, unfortunately this one sat in my garage for about a year and as you can see it got some moisture on it at some point and it's rusted. It's, it's just some light surface rust but I need to clean all of this off if I want to have any hope of getting a good weld. So we're gonna prep this metal, get rid of all this rust and that will do um, a ton in in helping us come out with with a good product at the end. Welding is about 90% prep and about 10% running the, run the gun.
All right, we've got all of our pieces bent and we're ready to start tacking this together. Uh, one of the number one rules of welding is you always tack everything together before you start welding long beads because the metal will move around. The heat really affects the, the way metal acts. And so you want to get it all tacked and, and fit, fitted before you start to do permanent weld. It's a lot easier to come back and cut out a tack if something's not right and we can bend it to where it needs to be. So. Now when you weld, there's two things that you need to consider. One is wire speed and the other is how hot you're going to run the gun or the, the amount of voltage you're going to put through the wire. And that's dependent upon how thick a wire you're using. Um, you generally get a feel for the, for the way it's welding and the way it sounds after you've welded for a while. But to take all of that guesswork out of the equation, Miller has what they call an auto set feature on these welders which is, is super handy. Let me show you how that works. The way the auto set works on the Miller machine is you just tell it what thickness of wire you're running. They've got 0 .024, 0 .030, 0 .035. We're using 0 .030 wire, so we click it to that setting. Now, we just put in our material's thickness. We're going to be welding about 3 uh, yeah, this is 3 16 inch steel. So we're going to put it towards 3 16 You'll also notice on the voltage that it's up to an 8. On the wire speed, we can manually adjust our wire speed if we want to, but I find that if you just put this on the setting of the wire thickness that it, it works pretty dang good. So we'll give this a try and then from that initial welding we'll see if we need to run it a little hotter or a little colder. I generally run them a little hotter, but we'll set it this way and see. Another tip, if your welds just aren't working or that's not welding correctly, check your ground. You've got to have a good clean ground, especially if you're repairing something that already had paint on it. You really want to get your ground on bare metal so that you can complete this electrical circuit and get a nice hot, hot well. Pay a close attention to the sound of this weld and you'll hear it, it, it has a real, like it sounds like static. That's the sound you want to hear. You don't want to have a lot of popping and spitting. You want it to be a nice, clean zzzk. Sound like static electricity. Another cool feature of this 211 is you'll hear the fan cycle on and off. Uh, traditionally, when you'd kick the machine on, the fan would be on all the time, which made for a lot of noise. This machine is designed to only kick the fan on when it senses the temperature on the internal components getting high enough, so the fan doesn't run constantly. For me, filming, it's really great because when I want to talk to you, even though the machine is still turned on, we don't have to hear all that fan noise in the background. Not a big deal, but I think it was kind of cool that the engineers at Miller thought of that. Hey, that's starting to look like a bumper. Sweet. We're done tacking this together. Everything looks good and straight. So now it's time to start welding in these beads. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I can get you is get comfortable get in a position where you know you'll be able to do the 
the entire weld that you want to do without having to change or shift your body and make sure that the, the gun's not going to kink or your B and anything's going to conflict that you'll be able to make the entire weld in one shot. Um, and that will really improve how your welds turn out. So I'm going to go ahead and start welding this up. <clears throat> kind of show you what I mean here. That's what you want to go for is a nice, they call it a stack of dimes, but you want a nice continuous bead like that. Let me see if I can zoom in and show that to you. The cleaner you can make these welds to begin with, the less grinding and, and coming back to fill in holes and stuff that you'll have to do. So you want to get a nice clean bead as you go across. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. Some guys like to do a, a letter C where they go top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom like that. I like to do a, a cursive E, so I sit, I do loops like this when I weld, and I generally drag the puddle. Some people like to push it. There's, there's some reasons for both of those, but that's a little bit out of the scope of this video. But really, to get nice, good beads like that, I just, I'd make cursive letter E's like this as I go, and I just pay attention and, and try to stay. Uh, try not to, to stretch the puddle too far as I'm going. I'll see if I can get some close-up shots of that. I don't, I'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up, but we'll, we'll try one here and see. JCR Off-Road recommends you do all of your grinding before you weld in these D-ring tabs because it's very difficult to get in here with a grinder once those tabs are sticking out. And I recommend you do the same thing. Now this grinding is by far the, the hardest and most labor intensive part of this whole process. Welding this is, is easy. It's all the grinding and finish work that takes all the time. But if you take your time, um, it's really worth it to, to get that done right now so that it looks good once it's painted. I'm gonna go ahead and weld the tabs in now. Once those tabs are welded in, all we need to do is, is weld in the frame tie-ins and we are done. So let's get those tabs welded up. So to get this D-ring square to the body of the bumper, I normally use a little magnetic right angle. It's, it's really handy because it gives you a third hand as well. Um, but if you, don't have, if you don't have one of those, it's not the end of the world. We can still get this square to the body using a speed square. So what I'm going to do is just tack it in place and we'll put our speed square down here on the bottom and just tap it into where, tap it to where, to where it's square and then we'll go ahead and weld it in the rest of the way. So I'm just going to give it one little tack here.
Okay, that's square to the body of the bumper. So I'll go ahead and tack it in three or four spots so that it doesn't move on me when I start to really weld it up. And it'll be ready to go. Now we'll do the other side. So these final welds on the outside of the D-ring are really cosmetic. They're gonna really be seen. So I've, I've taken my time to set this up so that I can be comfortable, that it's as flat as I can get it, because it's a lot easier to weld a bead on a flat surface than on a sloping surface. And I've basically got one shot at this, so I'm either gonna be a hero or a zero, but we're gonna try and do a nice, clean, pretty weld on the front of these D-rings. And then, uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to put the tow hitch in yet or not, but if I decide not to, then we're done. I'm even going to do a little, going to do a little test pass here to make sure that I can get all the way across without any kind of interference from anything. I just want to make sure that I can back see, I'm going to change that around this way so that I can, I can drag the the puddle a little bit better this way. Okay. All right. Let's go for it. Well, let's see how I did. I did a little different technique here where I just drug the puddle rather than doing my regular cursive E. And that makes a, kind of a taller bead with a little bit, you can see kind of how it's got a little consistent grain there. If I wanted this to look like a stack of dimes, then I would have done that cursive E and drug the puddle back and forth like this. Instead, what I did was I just kind of maintained the shape of the puddle as I went, and that makes this kind of a, more of an even thickness of bead, but uh, it's just kind of personal preference. That stacked up a little bit more than I wanted to, but I think that looks all right. I'm certainly not gonna be embarrassed by that, so and it's a good solid weld. There you go guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Now I did this entire bumper as you guys saw with this Miller 211. This is the first time I've used it. Uh, I have an old Miller 161 or 164, a little, little 110 volt that I've done all of my previous welding on and I've loved that machine but it's amazing the difference that this 211 makes. The welding took me probably half the time that it did to do the rear bumper for Project Tetanus. This thing just, this thing lays down some bead awesome. And that auto set function that Miller does on their machines, it, it's, it just makes it so simple. You're not fighting with the wire speed and the voltage trying to get it to where it's just right. They've really got these machines dialed in good so that you just, you put your wire thickness, your material thickness, and I found nine times out of 10, that is absolutely spot on. So I'm really super happy with this machine. Now I want to thank Miller for sponsoring a 211 
for you guys. Now that's right, if you've made it to the end here with me, I want you to go to leapinjeep.com forward slash giveaway. And that's where you'll find all of the, the rules or everything that you need to do to enter to win a Millermatic 211 exactly like the one that I used to do this project with. I'll also, of course, I'll post a link in the description you can just click on. This machine's awesome, guys. I also want to thank JCR Off-Road for donating this front bumper kit for this project. Uh, as, as always, JCR stuff is just awesome. Excellent fit. All the pieces and everything well, well fit. The fit and finish on them is awesome. The, the cut's accurate. They just make great stuff. So thanks to JCR Off-Road for providing this kit for today's video. Thanks to Miller for providing the 211 and the 211 for you guys. So make sure you go click on that link, get entered in this contest. We want to give one of you guys one of these awesome welders. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like content like this, you can support us by going to Patreon. Um, I think it's Patreon slash Bleepin' Jeep. You can also like, share, and subscribe. Sharing the videos really helps us. And as always, thanks for watching. All right. See you next time. Good luck, guys. I, I really, I'm excited that one of you is going to get one of these welders. It's going to be awesome. All right. See ya.